Did you know there's another way to be efficient while managing your database lifecycle with the Nutanix database service? The Nutanix module for Ansible now supports NDB. It allows you to manage your database lifecycle, including provisioning, cloning, and refreshing clone databases. We're going to walk through several of these options, so let's get started. The first place we're going to start is at Nutanix.dev. We're going to search for Ansible, and you will find the Getting Started with Nutanix Ansible article. I did deviate a bit from the article. I installed the Nutanix Ansible module using Ansible Galaxy, which means I started in the article where it says demo configuration and set up the vault and vars files as shown in the article. When I did set up my vault, I did create a username for both Prism Central and NDB, which you will see in the playbooks in a few minutes. If we go to the top of the article and click on the link for Ansible module, this will take us to the GitHub repository. From here, if we click on examples, then NDB, we can find several example playbooks. I use them as a base for all the playbooks in this video, with a few minor tweaks. You could take the two provision database playbooks, fill out the variables for your environment, and they will provision a database. So let's take a look at our first playbook, the one for provisioning a database. Some of the tweaks I've made compared to the example playbook are the Nutanix username and password are calling my vault credentials, an extensive use of variables, and I use prompts for the database name and the database VM name. Using variables gives you the flexibility to not change the playbook if you want to use it for multiple database provisioning. All of the playbooks I will be showing will be using pretty much the same format above the task prompts as shown in this playbook. So let's take a look at the vars file so we can see the variables that I have set up. If I were doing this in a production environment, I would put all of the passwords in the Ansible vault. I could also put the database name and VM name in the variable file instead of prompting for them. So let's see this in action. I'm going to open up a terminal and run the Ansible playbook command for this playbook to start provisioning. It will prompt me for a database name and a server VM name. Once we have filled them out, the playbook kicks off provisioning an NDB. And if we switch over to the NDB console and open up the operation screen, we can see that it is in progress. And with the magic of video editing, we can see that it has been completed successfully. We can also click through a few menus in NDB to see the details of the provision database. If there were any errors, the provisioning would be rolled back and you would get a debug or error message in the terminal where you launch the playbook. Once you have a database provision, you can then create clones for testing. In the Create Clone playbook, it is a little simpler than the provision database playbook. I am also using prompts for this playbook for the clone database name and the database VM name. This playbook does create a new database VM. However, you can change the option under dbvm from Create New Server to Use Authorized Server. Then you would provide the name of the existing server you would like to use. This playlist will create the clone from the specified time machine using a specific snapshot UUID, which you can get from the API Explorer in NDB. I have asked for enhancement for this to have an option to use the latest snapshot for the time machine, so hopefully we'll see that option in a future release. You can set up an automatic schedule for refreshing from the source database with the refresh schedule command. You can also use the removal schedule command if you'd like to remove this clone after a certain amount of days. So let's create a clone of this database. We're going to open the terminal and run the playbook command. I get a prompt for the clone database name and VM name. And of course, once those are filled out, it will kick off the clone operation. We can see that running if we switch over to the NDB operation screen. Once the clone operation is complete, we can check the details of the clone in NDB. And just like provisioning, if there is an error, it will roll back and report the errors in the console and the NDB operations tab. So once you have a clone set up, you may want to refresh that from the source database. So we have the Refresh Clone Playbook. It is a little bit different than the other two because it has two tasks. The first task pulls information from the clone database from NDB. We then set the database ID and latest snapshot refresh time snap as facts. This allows us to just know the name of the clone database we'd like to refresh without having to use the API Explorer to get that information. We're going to run this playbook like we did the other ones. We're going to get a prompt for the database clone that we'd like to refresh, which will complete pretty quickly in most cases because NDB uses the thin snapshots of the Nutanix Cloud Platform. So even the largest clones will complete a refresh quickly. So for our last playbook, we're going to look at a playbook that will remove clone databases. This playbook also has multiple tasks. The first task is a clone infos task, like in the refresh clone playbook. We use this for the same reason as the Refresh Clone Playbook, so we just need to know the name of the clone database that we would like to remove. The second task removes the database from NDB and deletes it from the VM. Once that is complete, the third task kicks off and removes the VM from NDB, 
and deletes the VM from the Nutanix cluster. This task will only work if this is the last database on the VM that is managed by NDB. You can comment out this task of the playbook if you just want to use it to delete the database and not the VM. So we're going to kick this last playbook off like we did the other ones. We're going to answer the prompt for our database name. And you can see the UIDs that it's pulling under the output. If we click over to NDB, we can see that the database is being removed. Once the database removal task is complete, we'll see the unregistered DB server VM task kick off. If we switch over to NDB on the operations menu, we can see that the tasks are completed. So that wraps up a look at a few of the operations that the Ansible module supports with NDB. This allows NDB to be your database automation hub while using your existing automation environment to increase your efficiency of database lifecycle management. Select next video to see another video on the Nutanix database service. If you'd like to try out NDB for yourself, check out Nutanix.com test dash drive. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any new videos.